So we're continuing today to live the dream with Nux3 and today we're looking at site-wide data. So things where we've got the same piece of data that we need in multiple parts of our website. We're going to look at the various different options that we've got open to us with Nux3, how we use them and more importantly when we should use them. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever it is that I find you, and welcome along to the channel. So today we're looking at site-wide data and how we can share data across our site. So what have we got available to us in Nuxt 3 for handling this kind of problem? So the first piece of functionality that we've got available to us is in our Nuxt config file. And what we can do in here is we can add a public runtime config element into here. And in here, we can add a public and there is a there is a private section as well. But the public section is the bit that's available to the client side. So inside here, you can just create any property you like with any constant piece of data. And that piece of data is available across your site. So now that I've got the site name in there. What I can do is come over to the header. You can see at the moment, I've just got some hard coded text in there for the actual site name. So what I have to do is come down to my TypeScript and in here we can create a constant. We can pull in using the use runtime config composable from Nuxt3 and we can extract the config value out of that. So once we've got that config value, we can then go up to the place where we want to use that config and get rid of that hard coded value. Put in our view angle brackets and we can use that config value. And it's great because we get the autocomplete on there as well. So TypeScript helps us and knows exactly what property we've got inside that configuration. So we can just auto complete on site name. And now when I save that and come back over to my site, just to prove the point, I can refresh that and I've still got my, my text up there for my site. So that gets us some fixed config static data, if you like, um, data that doesn't necessarily change across your website. It's constant information. So it's suitable for things like the website logo, header, any text that potentially doesn't change across your site. So that's when you should use the public runtime config. But what about if we've got data that um, needs to be mutated as we go through our site. So maybe something like a last visited value we want to show the user. So by default, we might set that to null or some really silly value like back in 1970 or something like that. And then we might update that from a cookie, for instance, or we might have some sort of cookie consent flag to say whether or not this user has consented to using cookies on our site that we also store inside a cookie and retrieve that and update that flag site wide. So it's not something that we can store as a constant. It's something that we're going to default and then change when we update our site. So what do we use for that? So historically on Nux2, we would have used Vuex, but Vuex has been replaced There's a new kid in town and it's been replaced with Pina, which is pineapple in Spanish, apparently. So Inya is the, is the new kid on the block and the new favoured child. So we're going to have to go and learn all about Pinya. And it's not that big a jump really from Vuex. So let's jump in. Let me kill that. So let's go and install Pinya. And we're also going to install the Nuxt add-on to enable Pinya for Nuxt. And then in here, in our Nuxt config, we need to go and create a modules section and add Pinya into that to enable it for Nuxt. And then we're going to go and create our store. So let's come over to our 
Nuxt app, create a new folder, create a new store folder, like we would do for Nuxt 2 as well. And let's add a new file, except now we're using TypeScript, so we can use an app and a TypeScript file. So the first thing we need to do in a store file is import the define store from Pinya. We basically define the store, close off some of this so that we can see what we're doing. So we define a new store and we're calling it app store and we set that as a constant. So app store will then be available in our application and we can import use app store wherever we want to actually use this store is what this constant does. So within our store, we obviously need a state like we would do with Vuex as well. So let's create a state property and that needs to return an object. And the object it's going to return in our case is, we're going to call it site properties. That is going to be an object as well. And we're going to have a cookie consent flag is just a boolean which we're going to initialize to false to begin with so this will indicate whether or not the user has consented to cookies across our site but obviously you can add whatever flags or values you want to actually have in your app wide store so that's given us our actual value where we store things to mutate the door we have to have an actions property and in the actions, we just define methods that we want to mutate store with. So I can say I want to update cookie consent with a value. And inside there, I can use this to get hold of the actual cookie consent value. And then to actually get the value out safely without directly accessing the store state we have our getters. So we have a getters property and in there we define a getter that we want to actually go and retrieve the cookie consent from the site properties. So that's our kind of three basic components of a Pinya store. But as you could see there, when I when I type this, it doesn't it doesn't give me any IntelliSense and if I just type in some arbitrary value here, it's it doesn't care it's it's not warning me of any problems so now that we're using typescript we can enhance this a little bit and we can use some interfaces so at the top here we can define an interface for our site properties and give it a cookie consent value and then we can also define another interface for our actual app store itself so in here we can create an app store and we can say that that contains a site properties value um, called site properties. So with that, we can then go and clearly define some of these elements. So the state should return a type of app store state. And we can see that it's now giving me some nice warnings so because it's case sensitive i've got a capital c here i've got a lowercase c so it's not happy with that so let's change that to fix that and then in the update we can say that the value or this has a type of app store state so we can explicitly type the this property and we can explicitly type the value property as a boolean so then it starts complaining about it doesn't know anything about this property here. And if I do that, it gives me the IntelliSense on this because I've explicitly typed it. So we start to get some nice coding benefits to help us with our coding without making mistakes. So I can also complete and get some valid code. And again, the same down here as well. So state we can explicitly type as an app store state. And then we can correct that so that we've now got some nice help with our code. So that gives us a nice robust app store. But then how do we actually go and use it? So let's jump over to our 
layout that we created previously. And if you haven't been following along, then there are some previous videos. I'll put a pop up at the top so that you can find those. So now we can come over to our layout and use that store. So first thing that we need in here is a script setup with a language of TypeScript. And then I can import the store. So this is where we use our export. So we import that constant that we defined in the store from the store folder and the app.ts file. And now that I've got that, I can define a constant to actually be used as the accessor into that store. So this is now warning me that I'm not using it anywhere. But with that there, I can go and add something in the template up there to show that particular value out of the store. So this is calling the getter and returning us a Boolean. So let's go and run this up and we can see that I get my cookie consent value and it is set to false, which is what we initialized it to or what it will be initialized to here. Look in our store. So let's go and actually mutate that value now in our template. So let's come back over to our template and let's add in our script here the on mounted method or event. And inside here we can have an arrow function. And inside the arrow function we can do app store dot update cookie consent we can set that to true. So now when the layout gets loaded, I come back over here, refresh this. Our cookie consent value was initialized to false originally. Our layout comes in and updates it to true. So you, it shows how you could have some code somewhere that's reading that cookie consent value and then updating the store. So it's mutating that value across our site, but it's still globally available across our site so anywhere we can import this into any component and we can access the current value of that cookie consent value. So that shows how we can do both public runtime config for static type data and also using the Pinya store for data that you want to change over time. What about if we've got a mixture of those two where you want to not necessarily initialize that to say a, a value, but you actually want to pull that from the runtime config. So let's imagine that we want to change this value down here to actually pull my company from some static data, but append on the current year. Let's go and do that. So let's jump back over to our Nuxt config and go and add in a static value for company name for instance, and we'll just set that to my company. And then in the store, we'll add a value into our interface for copyright text, and that is a string. So we will initialize copyright text to an empty string. We will add a getter for copyright text. And we won't have an action because this is a read only property. So there's only a getter effectively. We never want to update the copyright text. It's a one time update. So now how do we actually update the value to pull in that value from the public runtime config? Well, we can effectively define a, a small plugin element to this. So we can pull in the define Nuxt plugin in here and we can export default and use define Nuxt plugin and inside there that has an arrow function and then inside of defining our Nuxt plugin we get hold of the runtime config using a globally defined Nuxt uh, composable called use runtime config and then we can get hold of our app store using what's defined in this particular store so we're getting hold of that inside of our plugin as well like we would from anywhere on our site and then when we've got hold of that we can do an app store so we can directly access the state as this is embedded within our store 
we wouldn't advocate doing this anywhere else but um, as this is a, a kind of direct update that we're doing at initialization time we can kind of get away with doing it here if we close our eyes a little bit and so we can update the copyright text and we can use an interpolated string just to inject the year obviously you could get that from a date time value but for the purposes of this exercise this is good enough and then we can use the runtime config object get hold of the public area from that and use our company name value so we've now populated our copyright string changing it from what's supplied as a constant from the public runtime config and adding on the year so now we need to go and change the footer component to actually use that store value so let's go and do that so we can copy what we had in here to get hold of the store itself and then we can replace uh, this value here with a value from the store so uh, copyright text there as we've defined this as a plugin we need to come over to our nuxt config and in the plugins area we need to reference our stores plugin do our tilde store folder and app in there that should restart nuxt now if we jump over here refresh our page and we get our 2022 my company and just to prove that that is actually working let's come over to the store change that to some other value and we see that is updating from the store so it's pulling this part from our constant value and then adding on some extra value and mutating that so that kind of pulls the two aspects of nuxt together so that shows you hopefully how you can share some data across your site in various different ways and hopefully you found this useful and if you did then please do like and subscribe because there's more nuxt 3 magic coming and with that said i want to thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video